And now to a rare interview with a man behind a lot of music you might have heard. T-Bone Burnett has produced songs for major acts, films, and TV series. He has a new album of his own this month, and Jeffrey Brown sat down with him recently as part of our arts and culture series, Canvas. Behind the hugely influential soundtrack for Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, which sold 8 million copies and launched the surprise rise of bluegrass music as a popular phenomenon. The sun is sinking fast. Behind the unlikely 2009 album of the year pairing of Robert Plant and Alison Krauss and recordings over the years by so many great musicians. He's a man you usually don't see, T-Bone Burnett, one of music's most acclaimed producers. Burnett is winner of 13 Grammys. Thanks to Naris and the Grammys, and thanks to all of you. An Academy Award and many other Thank honors. So and at age 71, he's just released an album of his own music, the first in 11 years. You don't mean a word you say. He joined us recently at the Schultz Beer Garden, an Austin establishment that bills itself as the oldest operating business in Texas. Well, I have to say, I've, I've never felt I had a career. I just take care of the thing that's right under my nose. I try to choose things that connect to everything else I'm doing. Yeah. And I think that's what integrity is, that, that, that your life is integrated. Raised in Fort Worth, Joseph Henry Burnett took the nickname T-Bone and began his career as a songwriter and performer. Way up in the hierarchies. Big picks up his horn. And in 1975, he was picked by Bob Dylan to join the famed Rolling Thunder Review, a group of all-stars, along with then lesser knowns like Burnett. I was being thrown into the deep end. I learned really everything I needed to know to make it through the next 50 years of my life from that, from that experience, because it was not just performing, but it was a it was storytelling using different artists and different songs and different voices. And it was working with different artists that he made his name. Roy Orbison, Elvis Costello, Counting Crows, the list is long. 95% of, of a producer's role is support and encouragement. You, hopefully, what, the way I do it is I find the best possible people I can find to do the job, and then I get out of their way. I've seen descriptions by musicians you've worked with where they're saying at the sessions, it doesn't look like you're doing all that much. Well, yeah. I, what, are you, what are you doing? I'm listening. One thing I know is all the best art is made by artists working at full autonomy. And the more strings you attach to an artist, the more, the more autonomy you take away from him, the less able he is to make music. But so what are you listening for eventually? That's intuition, that's feel. Or, or, you know, it's experience too. It's, I'm listening for resonance and tone, and I'm listening for the story. I'm listening for the story to get told. These days, Burnett wants all of us to listen better. In recent years, he scored the soundtrack for the HBO show, True Detective. Filled with moody music, he created with keyboard whiz Kefis Chancia and percussionist Jay Bellarose. Scoring True Detective and the, lang the complex language of True Detective yeah. led us into uh, this, this place of danger and mystery that seemed appropriate to the subject matter. This visualization shows their new collaboration. A new experimental album called The Invisible Light. It's the first of a proposed trilogy. Burnett calls it electronic and tribal music. I'll try to forgive you, then I'll try to forget you. The big subject matter for Burnett these days, put forth in a full-throated critique in his keynote speech at this year's South by Southwest Festival, is the negative impact of information technology and so-called surveillance capitalism. Companies like Facebook should not be allowed to behave like digital gangsters. We all have strings attached to us now. Everywhere we go, we have different, different uh, uh, technologies zeroing in on us and following us, tracing us, 
tracking us, predicting what we're going to do, and trying to actually move us into doing things that, that we don't necessarily want to do. The musicians have been the canary in the coal mine for all of this, right? In what sense? The surveillance capitalists confiscated our stuff first. Our, they took our music and said information wants to be free, so we're just going to take your music for free. Disrupting the music industry, yeah. which you've and been then part they, of. And then they made billions, tens of billions of dollars from monetizing in the parlance of our times our property that they had confiscated. Now everybody's feeling it, so people are listening now. In the meantime, the T-Bone Burnett story continues, as always with a variety of projects and artists. Among them, producing the just-released album by Sarah Bareilles and scoring a forthcoming Broadway musical titled Happy Trails on the life of cowboy actors Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. I don't want to do anything that's disconnected from the other things. I don't want to embarrass any of the people I've worked with in my life. I want to, I want to try to hold up a good standard for all of us. Somehow that's added up to a career, though, huh? I guess you can call it that. I think careers are for lawyers, and careers are perfectly good things to have. But for me, this has just been my work. It's been my life, you know. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin.